I got moved into comp, I think it was the start of 2018. Yeah. So, yeah, it's been like two and a bit years now. Mm -hmm. But before that, I was in prep. I was in prep and wrote at frame store for like four years. Mm -hmm. um, so I did like my stint in paint and wrote. Yeah. And, uh, and then, yeah, at the end of that, I yeah. got moved up into comp. Hi, and welcome to the VFX Artist Podcast. On today's episode, I have Prince Yadam, a compositor at Frames for London. During today's discussion, I'm looking to find out more about Prince's journey to becoming a compositor at Frames for London, as well as to learn more about what compositors do in the VFX industry. I hope you enjoy the show. As the tradition goes, if can you just introduce yourself and just tell us what you, you currently do? Uh, so my name is Prince. Uh, I am a compositor. Wow, it feels weird to say that. I'm a compositor yeah. for film at yeah. a film store. And um, I also do like videography and travel photography outside of that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I have, I'm just curious, how long have you been in that role as a compositor? Um, so I got moved into comp, I think it was the start of 2018. Yeah. So, yeah, it's been like two and a bit years now. Mm -hmm. But before that, I was in prep. I was in paint and wrote at a frame store for like four years. Mm -hmm. um, so I did like my stint in paint and wrote. Yeah. And, uh, and then, yeah, at the end of that, I yeah. got moved up into comp. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but like, because <laughs> I... <laughs> Because I know you, I've, I've known you for some time and I've, I've known you being already in the industry ever since you were at university. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, can you tell us just about how you, you got your, you first got your foot in the door um, whilst you were at university? Um, yeah, so when I was, I've always had like this thing of, I, I just didn't want to, like the fear of failure kind of always yeah. pushed me to to kind of look for work or look for yeah. a, a jobs or whatever even before we had finished uni when we was in yeah. Ravensbourne yeah and um I, I kind of quickly realized when I was in uni that oh I, unless I have some sort of experience and can understand and know the industry before I leave mm -hmm. um, it will be much harder or more difficult for me to get a job yeah. So I was like to myself, oh, if I can start as early as possible, um, then I can avoid kind of any um, difficulty at the end of like yeah. once I graduate. Yeah. Uh, and kind of like get a head start. Mm -hmm. So what I used to do is on my time off or holidays or whatever, yeah. I'd always look for um, that work experience yeah. and always just be messaging companies to try and get uh, anything that I could really to do yeah. just to kind of build up. Yeah. Um, not only myself but my understanding of the industry as well because um yeah I, I didn't want to come out and be running for ages yeah um I wanted to kind of like speed up that whole process and yeah. kind of get a start so I think it was before um I think it was in my last year yeah or even the year before that I was in contact with a company called Time Based Starts I think you're quite familiar with them yeah okay. and those guys were like amazing man I I, I knew nothing at the time mm -hmm. And I was running with them um, and like, they teach me so much stuff. They let me work on projects. So even for my, my, my last end of year, like uni project, I didn't have to do anything cause I'd done it already. <laughs> I'd done it all. I'd done, done a bit of everything in all disciplines whether it was like personal work or professional work. Mm -hmm. And I could just present like, oh, I worked on this advert and yeah. I worked on this film or whatever. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that kind of got me a, a, a good intro before I'd even graduated. Yeah, yeah, sounds sounds epic. But where do you think that um, like interest or that move for you to that curiosity to 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 go in and look for com companies? What do you think? Where do you think that came from? Just just because sometimes most like most of us or like some people are not they don't know what they want to do or they're not they're not really sure about. How to like take um, take action like you did just by, yeah. or at least they don't they don't they don't know what to do like they don't have the the knowledge of 
how to like approach I don't know how to explain it but because you, yeah. you 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 went out I'm just wondering how how you you learn about deciding to to go and and research and and contact companies um I don't to be honest with you I don't really know like yeah it's just um I just think I I took the initiative within yeah. myself yeah to kind, of, to kind of do it and I, I think a lot of it came from well some of it came from when I initially went for my interview with uh, Ravensbourne I didn't know anything man like yeah. I tried to blag my way onto the degree course and like it went <laughs> terribly <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I had some CD that didn't even work. Like, it was a shambles. Yeah. Uh, and that feeling of, I, when I had that feeling of failure, I was like, this is never happening to me ever yeah. again. Like, ever yeah. again. I did yeah. the foundation course and ended up getting onto the degree course. But it was that idea of like, oh, I don't really want to fail again. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I was like, I'm just going to try and do everything I can to kind of get in contact mm. With people in the industry and make those yeah. connections because i knew a lot of people who had done and when you're growing up mm. especially like when you come from where we're from you hear that oh, what are you doing and yeah yeah like, yeah what? you're not going to come out of uni and get a job look at this yeah. person who studied this they yeah. didn't get a job and so i was like look there's no way i'm going to be one of those people who mm. leave uni and don't yeah. don't do what they studied three four years yeah. of, of their life for. not that there's you know people go on and do other things but for me personally I wanted to do this and I was like I need to do everything that I can now yeah to kind of get a head start on yeah that. So, yeah. yeah I kind of had like an internal drive within me to not sure, yeah yeah to not not yeah. go out and and kind of fail in that way yeah sure yeah, yeah. Well, but where where did that interest of for compositing come from um so it's, it's funny actually like I I Originally, I wasn't really into compositing. Like, I didn't really know what it was. Yeah. When I did used to do work experience back in the day, I always just used to be like, oh, and people ask me, like, what do you want to do? And I used to be like, oh, I, I want to do post-production. Yeah. Uh, and people look at me and be like, yeah, but there's like a whole wide range yeah, of, sure, yeah. you know what I mean, involved in that. Yeah. Um, and I used to be like, oh, I want to be an editor. Okay. So yeah. originally, I wanted to be an editor because I enjoy editing. I edit yeah. at home even now. Yeah. Um, and then I kind of, got into more of the effects side of things and I was really into motion graphics for a while mm -hmm. uh, and then I kind of had an interest to uh, how can I combine my interest for effects and also my interest for editing and like live action things together yeah and that, um, ended up being compositing when I found out about the department and what they do yeah uh, gathering elements together and putting it together to make uh, like a, a, a real um, something that looks real yeah um, that really appealed to me so it, it was like those those doing those bits of work experience and seeing it in in like live in the flesh from my own eyes what people are actually doing I was like oh this is crazy how have they taken that guy's head and put it onto another guy's head and blah 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 so yeah I always found that super cool yeah yeah, yeah. um yeah man um I just remember at the time that I think was it between 2000 and 10, 11, at the time that you, uh, you were freelancing as well whilst you were at uni, well, I yeah. think when we came out of uni, but, but back then Flame and Smoke were their main compositing yeah. software as well, at least for commercials anyway. Yeah. I'm just, can you tell me um, when you became the industry standard <laughs> and how that affected you or how you transitioned to it from yeah, Flame or Smoke? Yeah, that's a good, <clears throat> that's a good question because me and my friend Akwazi, yeah, uh, we were like crazy. We were like hell bent on being flame flame operators. Like that was yeah. our thing. Yeah, we wanted to come out of uni and be like the the first black flame operators that we knew. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> it was such a, a big deal for us. Um, yeah, and yeah. So everything that I was doing at the time was geared towards flame or smoke or flare or whatever yeah. it was. Um, but I, I can't. I think it was like a year. Or so after we left uni, mm -hmm. um, I started hearing people talking about Nuke a lot more and mm -hmm. how Nuke is becoming like the thing. So this must have been around 2012, 2013. Yeah. So a lot of companies were already using it by then. Um, and everyone had always told me like, oh, it's so hard to get into Flame and be a Flame op. Like those guys are pretty established. 
Um, and yeah, I didn't, I just didn't really see a route for myself, like ending up uh, as a flame up. Like I just, I couldn't see a way for me to do it or, or, or at least to be in a place where I could have a set path where I'm going to do this and then I'm going to do this. And then eventually I'll end up as a flame up. Yeah. Um, Cause I wasn't in house anywhere. I was just freelancing. Yeah. And so, yeah, it was pretty tough. Um, so at some point, I can't remember what year it was. It was the year Framestore was working on Robocop. Okay. Um, I decided to, so it's funny because I did all that kind of work to not have to run. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then when I got to the point where I was like, oh, I can't, I'm not going to do Flame anymore. I took the decision to go back down to running mm-hmm. to kind of work my way up back through um, so that I could learn Nuke at like okay. a film or TV place. Yeah. Um, so that was a bit of a hard decision, but mm. one that ended up paying off. So yeah, I ended up going back. I ran at one or two places and then ended up getting a job at Framestore as a runner. Mm-hmm. Uh, I ran for like for like a month. Yeah. And um, yeah, I ended up getting moved into the pay and rower department. Yeah. Because, but it still paid off because one of the guys that, the guy that was actually head of that department was someone that I had, I had met and became mm-hmm. friends with during my time. Yeah. doing work experience and interning at the mill yeah so yeah it's still it still paid off but yeah it was a conscious decision like oh i'm not going to do flame anymore i'm going to stop this yeah. i'm going to go into the tv uh, the film route yeah and learn. yeah yeah it's quite interesting because i i was i was quite curious about why you gave up freelancing yeah. To, yeah. To, to get a much more like established role so yeah, yeah. it's interesting yeah. to know yeah, yeah. that's tough. Was the, that was the story behind it <laughs> yeah yeah but yeah before i get carried away just just for anyone watching are you able to explain what a compositor does and what you're typically tasked to do on a day-to-day basis yeah i, I always think i explain this really bad <laughs> <laughs> so uh basically what we do is we will have like a live action scene or shot something yeah. that someone's actually shot a video or a mm. clip or whatever and it's our job to get assets that other departments have made so for example one department might have made effects uh, like smoke and fire another department might have made a a cg character a 3d fake character Uh, another department might have made a background that uh, we have to put in and all these different computer generated um, bits of assets or images and we have to take all of those and put it together into that live action scene into that real life shot and to uh, make it look real so that when you watch it, it looks like all of those things are part of real life and that they haven't been <clears throat> made on a computer. Mm-hmm. Um, so for example, we may get um, like a CG character mm-hmm. and if we put him into this, the scene as is, sometimes he won't look as real. So we have to try our best to, to blend him in, whether that's through grading or, or other techniques yeah, to sure. make him look like he belongs in that live action yeah. in that real life scene yeah so, sure. that's the kind of stuff that we do yeah what are what are the the i'm sure there are stages of like seniority um mm-hmm. so um what are the stages because i know there's like pro, like roto and prep as you said yeah and so i'm just wondering like what are the, the, the seniority levels and what the difference is between like roto and prep and being a, a compositor yeah, so, so um, being in, in uh, Roto and Paint, they, they are also one of the um, asset departments okay. uh, that essentially are doing, um, preparing things for the compositing department. So, for example, you might create, um, uh, let's say there's a shot that you have that, uh, that's been filmed and maybe there's a character that's meant to be flying and they're on wires mm-hmm. and there's a blue screen behind them or something like that. So what prep would do, it would be their job to remove the wires. And then once the remo- the wires are removed from that character, that shot would then go onto compositing, yeah. uh, onto the comp guys. They'd have the shot with no wires and it would be their job to key or to get rid of the blue background or green screen that you often see and then put something else in to yeah. make it look like the character's flying in the sky or, or yeah. something like that. So they're one of like the asset <clears throat> uh, preparing departments for compositing. Yeah. Uh, they do stuff for them and then they take it and then and then prepare the final shot. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's also not to say that prep is not, you know, uh, a senior department in its own right. Like a lot of the shots they do uh, would be quite challenging for compositors mm-hmm. as well. Like it's a really, 
important. All the steps are, are very important, but uh, people have this idea that patent rotor is somehow lower than compositing when mm -hmm. yeah. it, it could be argued that, you know, they're, they're almost as important um, yeah, but, yeah. As, as each other. Yeah. Um, so yeah, in, in compositing, you'd have, so, so yeah, I went through the compositing route because a lot of the skills that you learn in compositing, in, in painting rotor, sorry, help you when you become a compa. Mm -hmm. So that's that's why frames will have it, like you go through a prep mm -hmm. and then you'd go into into yeah. uh, into compositing because they value having that skill set a lot. Yeah, sure. um, but in terms of like the levels in, in, in um, compositing, it'd be similar to a lot of other departments. So you'd have your junior, mm -hmm. mid, um, senior leads and, and like your supervisors so that's kind yeah. of how the, the scale the scale yeah. would be yeah yeah sure but like 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 any any department vfx um there's usually like a lot of competition so how, how do you make sure you you are keeping on top of things to stay relevant <laughs> <laughs> uh, to be honest to be honest with you like I, I have my own motivations to to get better yeah. So I, I don't ever feel like I com I'm competing with anyone. Mm -hmm. um, but at Framestore, like, everyone is sick, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Like, yeah. everyone is good. Like, I don't ever feel like I'll ever be as good as, as a lot of those guys, man. Like, yeah. I go to work and I look around me and I just see what everyone's doing. And I'm just like, wow, like, I'm, I'm yeah. very, very tight. Like, I just want to learn from everyone. I don't yeah. view it as competition. Yeah. I'm just like, wow, that guy's really good at that. What can I yeah. learn from him? this uh lady's really good at that what can i learn from yeah. her? So I'm, I'm kind of you as school like i'll go yeah there and yeah I feel, things, do you know what i mean yeah i feel the same as well like being a much move i mean i think it happens to everyone because you're always like i don't know it's like judging yourself or second doubting yourself yeah but imposter syndrome isn't it? it's no real. yeah i know <laughs> i know so cool, like, i've been there i've been there so but, yeah, I'm not really like, yeah, in that kind of like, oh, I need to beat this person yeah. or I don't like, yeah, yeah, I think that's lame. Like, yeah, I'd rather just go there and just try and learn from everyone and yeah, yeah, and just get better, like, look at myself kind of thing. Yeah, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, I like you said, I, and I know that you, you like being behind the camera and like taking photos and videos and editing, but do you think having that knowledge is essential? Um, as a compositor of compositing, yeah, a lot of a lot of people say it is, and I can see why, um, because you learn the, the fundamentals of what makes an image real, how light works, mm -hmm. uh, how a camera reacts to to certain things, to light and shadow and composition, and yeah. our job is compositors, so we should know how to compose uh, an image well and how how uh, real life. Um, objects react to, to, to certain things. So yeah, definitely I can see how having <clears throat> a photographic eye can help you with with uh, being in a composite or, or like any kind of stage of the creative process really. Yeah. Um, you understand cameras, lenses, um, and it, it does make a, it does make it easier to wrap your head around, around yeah. quite a few things. Yeah. Yeah. Friends, I almost forgot, but if you don't mind, just can you Mention some of the projects that you, you've worked on. Oh, um, yeah. so Avengers, Endgame, <clears throat> Infinity War, uh, Beauty and the Beast, Detective Pikachu. Um, we're currently working on the new Matrix, The Matrix 4. Yeah. Uh, last year I worked on Tom and Jerry, um, The King's Man. Yeah. Um, what else? Fantastic Beasts. Yeah. Um, Jungle Book. Yeah. Gravity. Uh, yeah, man, it's been a yeah. lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, how, how, how do your parents, do your parents like understand or comprehend with what you do? Just No, nah, they, don't, they don't get it, man. <laughs> <laughs> they don't get it. My, my yeah. parents see me like editing at home when I'm on the computer. They yeah. see my camera and they see me like going out to take pictures. So when people ask what I do, they're just like, ah, he does editing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's what they say. Yeah. But yeah. My mum tries to understand a little bit. Like I, yeah. I gave her a little like frame store leaflet once and she was like, oh, yeah. this, this is how it works. Composite. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. They, don't, they don't, they don't. Yeah. 
they yeah. don't get like my names at the end of credits and uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, of course. But do you, do, did you do you did you um do you think your parents were quite supportive or like quite liberal and in terms of what you wanted to do were they quite encouraging because typically as African parents they or at least it used to be they they try to guide kids yeah. into them being like doctors or teachers or whatnot so how yeah. did your how 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 was the parents um influence in in you becoming a composite compositor uh, yeah, I, initially at the start, it was quite tough. Like they didn't yeah. understand what yeah. I wanted to do and why I wanted to do it. Yeah. Uh, and they did try and get me to like, they wanted me to be an electrician. <laughs> Every time I think, think about it and I look back, I'm like, wow, imagine <laughs> that route. Yeah. You know, just, but yeah, um, they, uh, I was fortunate that my parents trusted me. Mm. Uh, and they've always kind of tr trusted me to make like a right decision. So. Mm. When I said this is what I'm gonna do, yeah. they trusted me that I knew what I was doing, that I'd be able to make a living from it, mm -hmm. be able to provide at the time as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was very, very fortunate that even though they didn't understand it properly, mm -hmm. they trusted me that I knew what I was doing. So yeah. yeah, they they were quite they were quite cool with it in, yeah. in that respect. Yeah. But yeah, initially they tried it as they all do, like, no, yeah. don't do that, do this. Yeah. <laughs> I don't get why you're doing that. Um, yeah but yeah, yeah. They, came and they came around in the end yeah yeah i know i mean yeah like my parents were quite liberal they were like supportive they didn't really challenge what i wanted to do yeah and yeah. like lately like these days like when because because i freelance my parents they do tend to get worried like when i don't when i'm not booked and Yo, that is real when i was freelancing then yeah. the worry kicked in for them yeah. Yeah. like oh how yeah. can you how can you have a job and now you don't have a job? <laughs> yeah. 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 And I, I keep ex I keep telling them like, yeah, it's it's fine. But they then they they they, they think I should get a full time job, which yeah, yeah I don't really want to do, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. I remember whenever I used to come back, if I go on holiday and come back, my parents would be like, oh, do you still have a job? Like, you still have a job? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. they, didn't they, they didn't get it. Yeah, yeah. It's funny. funny. But yeah, um, yeah. what do you think is the best way for anyone to get their foot in the door um, these, day, these days? I mean, because before, running was the way. But mm. I, I, can't, I don't know, I kind of observed um, at the studios that are currently I, I freelance with and there seem to be less runners around I don't know mm. if that's changed so mm. I don't know what, yeah what do you think is the best way to to get your foot in the door mm, I think like the the uni path that like that we took I, I don't I don't know if it's as essential anymore because yeah. I see like a lot of obviously going to uni is good if that's what you want to do and stuff mm. but a lot I see a lot of kids who will maybe go to escape studios mm -hmm. and then can sometimes skip the whole running thing and go straight yeah. into the job that they want. Yeah, but sure. obviously not everyone has the money for it, <laughs> for an escape. Yeah, course. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, 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 I still see, I still see running as like the best entry level, like mm -hmm. way in, but I don't think that you need to be a runner to start learning anymore. Yeah like youtube university that's what i like to call it like that's yeah. real man there's so yeah. much stuff in there like everything that you'd ever want to know mm -hmm. um, or can learn is on there so yeah. i'd advise people to start taking the initiative and to always like start doing their own projects because that's stuff that we did when we were coming mm -hmm. along like, we always used to do our own our own stuff on the side and learn from from the stuff that we were doing yeah um so yeah i, I definitely still advise running if you know, you, let's say you can't go to university or you can't afford an escape course, yeah. then running is like your best entry in, but definitely also look away for that and and apply yourself to start like taking stuff in and learning on your own as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because I think the big, especially at the big studios, the big studios still have running. So maybe at the smaller yeah. places, they don't, it's, yeah. it's not as like a set thing as much, but yeah. Uh, definitely at the biggest studios, I think it's still very much that alive and kicking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. And yeah. I guess, yeah, I guess that would apply. Would you say that would apply for anyone 
looking to, to join the industry as a compositor, I guess. Like, yeah, yeah. It would be a similar, similar, yeah, sure. similar thing. Like, look yeah. it up. Look at yeah. what you can learn online and start building your skills up. Yeah, sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm just... Last question, which I have is, like, having, having been a compositor for, for film and commercials, like, which do you prefer the most and, and why? Oh, no one's ever asked this, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, man. Mm. You know what? I'm institutionalized now, man. Like I've been yeah. in, I've been at Framestore for so long. Yeah. That I'm, I'm used to, uh, like film and how it works. Yeah. Um, and stuff like that. So I definitely say, yeah, I'd say film. Although, yeah, I love commercials. Yeah. I love the quick turnaround. Um. But yeah, I'm institutionalized. I'm a film man now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sick man. But yeah. Yeah. Thanks, man. Like, yeah, I wanted that's. I wanted to find out more about your training. Thanks a lot for sharing as well. No worries, man. No worries. No worries. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Nah, it's been great, man. Thanks a lot.